The city had been lost a long time ago. Its defenders, however, were still fighting to hold the ruins. Even though they knew, even though they always knew, their cause to be hopeless. A young trooper crouched inside a half-demolished brick-built turret. He held the butt of a lasgun to his shoulder. Through its sights, he surveyed the toxic landscape that stretched out before him. A ragged, wheezing wind swirled about the trooper's shoulders, ashes dancing in its eddies. He could feel its sting even through his dark greatcoat and thick plates of carapace armor. Still, he showed no sign of discomfort, betrayed no weakness. He maintained his rigid, muzzle-locked stance, his trigger finger poised, waiting. He had waited for an hour or longer now, ever since the shattering thunderclaps of the siege engines had finally subsided. Ever since a deathly hush had settled upon this blasted wasteland, who could know what he was thinking? The young trooper had no name. He had no need of one. Instead, he had a number stamped into a dog tag. A number that identified his combat unit and his place within it and thus said everything there was to know about him. This is it. We have confirmation that the enemy is on the move. The general's voice, distant, echoing, metallic. The young trooper had to strain to catch the words. He was a long way from the nearest Vox speaker out here. Stand fast. Remember your training. Remember your orders. You must be ready to meet your attackers with lethal force. The young trooper wore a face mask. It trapped the sound of his own breathing in his ears. He held his breath to focus on the general's instructions. His air was filtered through a chest unit, fed to him through the mask by a rubbery hose. Still, it left a bitter taste, a gritty texture on his tongue. He knew the air was likely killing him, in spite of his protective equipment. Did he ever think about that? Did he dread the thought of flesh rotting from his bones, his internal organs liquefying? If he did, then he might have consoled himself with another thought. That death by radiation was a slow and lingering death, and therefore one that he would almost certainly not live to experience. They had classified this planet a death world, with good reason. It has been calculated that you cannot win this battle. That is not your objective. Your objective is to ensure that victory costs the enemy dearly. The enemy's resources far outweigh your own. For every second you stand against his guns, however you deplete those resources, you make him weaker. The price of this achievement in return is only the resource most abundantly available to us, most easily replenished. The price is that which is already the Emperor's by rights. Praise be to our Father, our Guardian. Today you face defeat at the small cost of your worthless lives, but die bravely, die hard, and your meager sacrifice will help pave the way for his most glorious triumph in the future. Praise be to the Emperor! The stirring speech concluded with a tinny fanfare. The young trooper could see them now. Rather, he could see a cloud of disturbed dust billowing along the horizon, presaging the enemy army's advance. The angry growls of machine spirits were carried to him on the ragged wind. Soon, for the first time in his short life, he would have to fight. His first battlefield, almost certainly his last. The young trooper had been trained. More than that, he had been bred to show no fear. Did that mean he didn't feel it? He had been taught to ask no questions. But did that mean he didn't wonder? Did he ponder the value of a human soul? The city had been lost a long time ago, millennia in fact. It had no worth of which the young trooper was aware, neither strategic nor mineral. He would die for it all the same, because that was what he had been birthed to do. It was not only his duty, but his destiny. And after all, this city was home to him in a way, although he had never seen the sky above it before today. For uncountable generations, his people had fought and died here for the barren soil beneath his feet, each serving the same intangible greater good, each seeking the redemption of this god-emperor damned world. The young trooper's home world, the only world he had ever known, a death world, 
by the name of Krieg. Elsewhere in the ruins, something had been woken by the percussion sounds of battle. Something that had slept for many nights and many days, and ought to have been long dead by rights. Something with barely enough strength left to lift its globular head. But it lifted its head anyway, and strained with the muscles in its six half-wasted limbs to push its belly up off the ground. Dust and debris sloughed from the creature's back, as, inexorably, it hauled itself into a standing position. It was dead, at least as good as, sustained only by an overwhelming biological imperative, a primordial need that wouldn't grant the creature peace until it had been satisfied. The need to ensure the continuance of its genetic material the need to breed. The attacking soldiers numbered in the low thousands. They were preceded across the battlefield and partially shielded by lightly armored support vehicles. The young trooper made out six or seven of these, not many, and from this distance they looked ancient, barely serviceable. The vehicle's turrets, however, were each manned and he had no reason at all to doubt that their pintle-mounted heavy stubbers were in working order. It was the soldiers themselves, however, who presented the most fearsome sight, marching in step with backs straight and rifles shouldered, apparently heedless of the peril they were parading towards, as if they knew themselves to be invincible. Their faces were concealed by the gas masks they wore, could it have been by chance that these lent them the appearance of hollow-eyed skulls, the symbol of death itself? Of course, the soldiers were only men. The young trooper knew this, as well as anyone could. He had known these men, many of them, all his life. He had no way of telling, though, which ones he had grown up with, studied, trained, and been drilled alongside. Like him, these soldiers had no names and no faces any longer. Like a force of nature, an irresistible, implacable force, the death core of Krieg bore down upon the young trooper's lonely position. Wait for it! The general's vox augmented voice cautioned. Hold your fire until it can have the greatest possible effect. A shot fired too soon is a shot wasted. The young trooper had been bred to show no fear. But most men would have fled, or at least frozen in terror by now. Far better to die with your weapon fully loaded than to empty it in vain. Your weapon can always be recovered and used again. The young trooper crouched inside his half-demolished, brick-built turret. He held the butt of his standard M35 lasgun to his shoulder. He betrayed no weakness. He maintained his rigid, muscle-locked stance, his trigger finger poised. 